Uh, welcome guys. I know it's been a, uh, a little bit since I've done a tutorial for one of, the, of our FPS and there's going to be some more tutorials come out and things but until we can actually get to certain spots and we're going to you know take it slow and everything. So in the meantime there's a little tweak that I made and everything else in the weapon script. And this is to update our UI, okay? Because we had no UI set up or anything like that. So I decided to make a little update so we can do a menu and things. Now, this is kind of tying it into the UI a little bit, but it's very easy to change it into some other thing if you really wanted to. So let's show what happens right now. Right now, this stays like this until we have our first send message, which comes from the weapon. And then it updates. Okay, we do a little reload. And we hit whatever, and it'll update. Okay, we have a maximum ammo cache, and it decreases each time we reload. The whole concept is to get this to update and the next video will probably be on the health itself okay so we're going to deal with the how we do this for our ammunition and then the next video probably will be the health way okay but they both will be pretty similar in stats okay and this will improve over time so we just need to get something in the game and then we'll test it out a lot, you know, ridiculously. And then, you know, that's just how it is. So, to first get started off, we need two images just for this background, okay? And that's all they are in the canvas. There's nothing special about them, just a picture with a image in there. I did a regular image with my uh, 256, 256 of black it's a nice little black um if you guys want me to include this image in the, this basic image right here leave a comment and i will include it in a, like a google download or whatever in the description or i may do it anyway but anytime you need something like information like a playlist or something like that it's in the video description. I am currently working on those rigorously. So it's just an image. Raycast target is off and all this other stuff. So it's all off. It's not native or anything. And then I put a text component below with bold. The font is 27. Um, I don't think it really matters about the rich text. Do I have a better text than this crap? Um, overflow. Will this not work the way it sits? Why does that work? Okay, it's probably too big. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Wow. That's really weird. Okay, so that text kind of sucks. Yeah, I guess it's Ariel. I don't like it that font but wait what why is it not working now oh not best fit okay 27 now it looks like crapola no no I left a little bit of space and stuff like that in case we want to put a small little image in there we can always line it up it's very very easy to do and I have them anchored one to one side, one to the other. 
But here's a little tip. Anytime you do like sizing right here with the width and the height, make sure you redo your anchors by holding shift and pushing this on the side and just click. That's all you gotta do. And it should shove it to the corner real good and then realign it a little bit. Because if you don't, sometimes it likes to do funky stuff or breaks your anchors. So, you know, instead of being on the bottom right, it'll be like somewhere in the middle right or something stupid. So make sure you do that and you should be fine. Okay. And the canvas has a stats script one is for the health component one is for the text component okay and i just made my canvas scaling 1080p in a 0.5 100 pixels reference scale with screen size match pretty easy additional shader channels no i don't want that okay so that's how that works we do have to have a graphics ray caster and stuff for other things, but for the most part, we're going to have this. So, in the health class for our little script, we are going to look at our code editor, if it will come up, you silly, silly thing. Okay, so there we go. All right. So, mono behavior, okay, just like usual. We add the UI. You don't probably need these right here, but I have them because later on we might use stuff. So, stats right here, we've got a public static reference to this. So, we can grab this very easily, okay? We have our two variables, which I just serialize them. They're not public, so I can't directly do this because I want the functions to do the work. Okay. In the start, we use our stats and make sure it's equal to this. So we're setting this reference. Okay. If you don't do this call, then it will say null and you'll get a big old error. Now, you're sitting here looking at this public void set help. This ignore till later, okay? Emma set Emma, and you see this Emma, uh, sender Emma, and then sender, okay? These are classes, okay? Which sender, and then we override this type, okay? But down here, we also have a sender Emma, which inherits from sender. Okay, because I tacked on this max and put another virtual void function. Okay, the reason why I did this is because this is specific for ammo. This can be used for anything that requires a name and ammunition and an amount. So let's say in UI, I need a, uh, a component that needs a name which is a key or maybe I'm sending it to another script to grab something here's the key name and I want you to grab me an amount and send it back to me so this could be the variable that I use and this can be applied for many many things okay like our health okay I need a, a name maybe like Chris Redfield or whatever right or my name comes up on the screen right above the health and then the amount of health that I have I can do that okay now if we do a sender for the ammo we may want a image okay a specific image for us like maybe it's a face of your model we can easily tack it on with the sender ammo and this doesn't get affected okay so we use our class reference which is specific for each weapon okay we send it this information and we let the UI do all the work sort the information and put it where it needs to go so send ammo we 
get the reference and send it to here. So mo.tax equals sent, which is our variable, underscore name, plus sent.amount. Then we plus with the little divider thing here, sender.max. And this gives us our slash mark in between these numbers. If you didn't have this part right here, both the numbers would be together. There would be no slash mark in the UI part. Go, you know, we got 30 slash of 1,000 or so, right? Instead, it would do 30, and then it would have 1,000 right next to it, and it wouldn't make any sense for the user. Yes, this is a little bit hard-coded in there, but I don't see any reason for you to need it any other way. You know, I mean, it, it really looks exactly the way it needs to be. And it's not that I didn't think about it. It's just, it's ammunition. What, what possible other way are you going to do this? And this doesn't mean that you can't do another type of function that goes in here and has an image. Okay, maybe we can do a layout group later on. Where we disable the image on the the next call, the next function that we got, if that if we need an image, we just write a different function for it. Okay, this gives it our, our nice little flexibility. Now this if we delete the sender ammo or sender, it will cause an error. If we delete this script, it will cause an error. Which is not a big deal, but in our ammo class, okay, what we do is use sender ammo, okay? And that's going to be how we do this. Now, where it gets called, I have it not called in the start, which I should, but I have it called in on enable, okay? I call a function called UGY. Because that's the system that we use. We use the UGUI instead of on GUI. We use the visual, like component based one. Okay. And what UGUI does is we call it when we do stuff. Like after I shoot, um, let's see. Yeah, after I shoot, I call UGUI. Okay, after we get done reloading, which is load ammo, I call it again. Do not call this function like up here because it's not going to work because the calculations haven't ran yet. Just like up here when you shoot, you need all this stuff to run first before you run the update for the visuals because if you did the math later, you know, it wouldn't update until you shoot again, which is kind of dumb, right? You, you shoot an ammo, and you still got 30 bullets, but you shoot again, and then you got 29, but actual, you got 28. It would be, like, lagged out. And these only run once, okay? Every time I shoot, this runs once, okay? So it's not a update update, like every frame. Which saves you much a lot of performance. You GUI after we load the ammunition. Okay, this only happens when we reload. Okay, and this only happens once. All right. I don't want to do it in the ray cast part because if we use this script for a shotgun, you know, like do the fire amount and have it fire out ten times, we would have it deduct ten bullets. When we only shot the shotgun one time, that that wouldn't be no good. Okay. So the UGUI does exactly this: ammo sender dot setup. We pass it in gun and ammo case. Ammo case is how much we have in total. You know, in total for our ammunition. Later on, we'll do some type of other class for this, but right now, this works, okay? Now, stats is our static reference. Then we get the menu stats dot set ammo, and we pass it the variable ammo sender. 
So this this is setting up the values for how much we have. This sends the UI the amounts we have on screen. Okay. P.S. This has to run last in the UGUI due to the math stuff Okay, and that should be everything for it. So, like I said, this is a very, 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 like, simple way of doing this, okay? As simple as I could possibly get it so that, you know, you guys got visual stuff going to, you know, the game, right? Because that's what we want. Something simple, something that runs quickly and efficiently. Because this is going to be sent to the UI system a lot. I mean, like, a super, super, super a lot. Every time we get hit, every time we shoot bullets, it's going to get sent a lot. So, but I don't want it to be in an update because... If you know anything about it, it has to recalculate a bunch of stuff in the background. And I experienced the problem with it running a lot on the visual part when I was doing my tower defense game. Okay? So anytime you need to update the UI, if it absolutely, absolutely, if you're not required to do an update, where it needs to be updated every single frame, then you need to make a function that updates when it happens. Like we shoot a bullet, it updates the information. When we're not shooting and stuff, that's when you need it to go, hey, don't do this and just leave it alone. Leave it set at idle so that you save yourself all that the frame rates you, you trust me if you update the ui too many times like a lot of stuff updating it all at once then you will run into problems you will use a lot of your cpu rebuilding the ui and if your game is starting to become like this one is where there's going to be a lot of stuff happening in the ui then you're going to you know run into some issues trust me it's not, I'm not kidding, okay? So, thanks for watching, guys. This is War over and out, and I will try to get the health one out pretty soon as well. If you know this, if you understand this video, the health one, you're going to know what it's, it's all about and things. So, you're probably going to be able to write the health one yourself. But if you don't, it doesn't matter because I will show you how to write that one as well. So peace, guys. Take care. And this is War over and out. And thanks for watching.